Give God praise for your pastor. Amen. Let me give an honor to the man of God of this house, who shepherds this flock. And so God sent us all the way from America. Amen. To come here tonight on divine assignment for a word from the Lord for you. Amen. Amen. And so you understand that you are on the heart and the mind of God. Amen. Yes. And I say it all the time that every child of God is on the heart of God. Uh. But it's through our intimacy with God. Uh. When we worship God. Yes. That we get in, in the heart of God. Okay. It's not enough just to be on God's heart. We want to be in God's heart. Amen. Because when God created us, when we originated, we came out of the heart of God. You understand that you are the breath of God. You are the breath of God and God never wastes a breath. When God blew breath, scripture says that man became a living soul. So the breath of God was spirit. The breath of God was us. When he blew spirit into this body, that's how the soul was formed. That's how we became alive. So we can't live without our spirit. Right? So the real you is not this flesh. The real you is spirit. Repeat after me. I am spirit. Say it again. I am spirit. I am and because your spirit that came out of God, uh -huh. that means you are a part of God. Amen. That means you are the breath of God. Mm -hmm. And that means that you carry the power of God. Amen. Understand this. I'm going to build my foundation and then we're going to take off. All right. So open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 10. This is my foundation scripture. If you understand this passage, everything else is going to make sense. If you understand who you are, everything else will begin to make sense. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. Matthew 10. I read verse 1. It says, And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Now, what type of sickness? Did he say some diseases? Or did he say all? All. All. Sickness and all what? Disease. Okay, we go to verse 7. And as you go, that means movement. That means we're taking steps. That means we're moving towards something. As you go, preach. Saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And so what is the kingdom of heaven? Verse 8 says, heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. So notice that the Lord said, as you go. So that means as God is ordering our footsteps, when God sends you, you're on assignment. So if you're on assignment when God sends you, what's your assignment? Your assignment is in verse 8. <coughs> If you, don't, if you don't know what your purpose is, I'm going to help you understand your purpose. Every child of God has the same purpose, but different assignments. Our purpose, verse 8, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. That's your purpose. Every man, woman, boy, girl, child, 
It's your job to heal the sick, mm -hmm. cleanse the lepers, mm -hmm. raise the dead, mm -hmm. cast out demons. So we go back to Matthew 10 verse 1. He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out, heal all kinds of sickness, all kinds of disease. And in case you forgot in verse number 1, he reminded us and started verse 7. As you go, preach. Everyone in here is a preacher. Amen. The pastor, that's a title, that's a position. Who, who, your scripture says he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers to edify, to build up the church. That's why we have teachers. Right? So that's a function in the body of Christ. But every child of God is a preacher. You're a preacher in your home. You're a preacher on your job. You're a preacher when you go to the shops. You're a preacher at the garages. You are a preacher. Everywhere you go, you must let your light shine. And so you have to understand that God gave you power. He said he gave them power. Now, does that mean some people have the power? The moment you accept Jesus Christ, you have the power. Repeat after me. I have the power. I have the power. I have the authority. I have the authority. So what is the power? The power is the power of Holy Spirit. The same spirit that rose Jesus Christ from the dead. Yes. Romans 8 says that resurrection power lives in you. So, okay, so resurrection power is in you. The same power that rose Jesus Christ from the dead is living in you. Repeat after me. Resurrection power, resurrection power lives, in me. lives in me. Okay, we understand that now. So, if you understand that you have power, it's not your power. It's God's power. So, we can't bring God's kingdom on earth. By preaching the word, healing the sick, raising the dead, cast out demons, except it be through God's power. But he made it easy for you. Luke 17 and 21 says, some will look here, some will look there. He said, but the kingdom of God is where? In you. So everything you're looking for is already in you. You just have to activate the power and the authority God's given you to go out and bring change. So guess what? Scripture also says that uh, uh, we are kings and priests unto God. When he says kings, he's being male and female. Gender inclusive. Kings and priests. A king rules. Right or wrong. A king has power. A king has authority. They can declare war. And a priest in the Old Testament, they had to go to the priests to pray for them and to make petitions unto God. But when Jesus Christ died and rose, the veil ripped. So now we can go directly to God for ourselves. You can go to God for yourselves. Not like in the Old Testament, they had to go to the priests. So you have direct access to God 24-7. Anytime you want, as often as you want. So God says now, I want you to rule on earth. Now understand there's three realms. There's three heavens. You have the first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven. The third heaven is where God is, God's throne. When our loved one who died in Christ go to heaven, that's where they are, in the third heaven. When scripture says we're seated in Christ Jesus, far above our principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. We're seated in him. We're seated in him. So you are above every witch, every warlock, every sorcerer, every demon that's trying to hurt you. What is things job? Kill, steal, and destroy. So watch this now. So the third heaven, that's what God's throne is. Then there's the second heaven. That's where all the spiritual warfare takes place. That's where the, princi the demonic principalities, demonic principalities are fallen angels who Satan assigns to rule over certain regions. 
We find in the book of Daniel chapter 10. Go to Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10. So you don't think I'm making this stuff up. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel 10 verse 12. It says, Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. Yeah. In other words, because of his prayer. There are angels who are coming because of your prayers. Watch this now. Verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. So this is Gabriel talking. Gabriel is the chief over all the courier angels, the messenger angels, the angels who bring messages, the angels who bring blessings. Michael is over them. He's, he's the chief over them. That's Gabriel. Gabriel is the chief over those angels. But Michael is the chief over the heavenly hosts. Those are the ones who fight. The heavenly hosts, they don't fight in heaven. Heaven doesn't need protection. The heavenly hosts fight in the second heaven for us as children of God. And Michael is over them. Remember I said in the second heaven That's where all the spiritual warfare takes place And so here we find Daniel was in the first heaven The earth Is the first heaven So Daniel's prayers Had to pass from the first heaven Through the second heaven To the third heaven Which reached God's throne God heard his prayers God answered his prayers God sent the answer to his prayers But it passed from the third heaven to the second heaven, but uh oh, what happened? It got held up for 21 days. But there's some things in your life that got held up for more than 21 days. There's some things in your life that's been held up for a year, two years, five years, 10 years, and it's been sitting in the second heaven being held up by demonic principalities. Well, well, why were they able to hold it up? Well, if God answered our prayer, then how could a demonic principality hold up the answer? It's called a legal right. They said, okay, we look at all the sin in this region. So then they go to the courts of heaven and they present their case to God. Remember, Satan says, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. So the enemy every day goes to the court of heaven. God has a court. He goes to the court of heaven. Remember scripture says in Revelation 12 that the accuser of the brethren makes brace charges against us night and day. So every night and every day there are principalities, demons going to the court of heaven saying, yeah, I know they prayed for that breakthrough. I know they're praying to be married. I know they're praying for financial breakthrough. And you released it. But legally we can hold it up because of what's going on here, because of sin there, because of what their ancestors did. There's some of your stuff getting held up because of nothing you did. It's because of the sins of your ancestors. Some of your ancestors came into covenant with demons. And they wanted money, they wanted power, they wanted influence. So they said, okay, you want this from us? You got to give something up. So they gave up family members. They gave up the bloodline. And now that gave demons legal access to your bloodline. Now, can you go into a bank and rob a bank legally? You're going to go to jail, right? 
But in the realm of the spirit, demons can steal legally if they have a legal right to sin, through iniquity, etc. So some of the things you've been dealing with has nothing to do with you. It's stuff your ancestors did long time ago. And what you have to understand is the enemy was fighting you not when you were born. They started fighting when you were conceived. In your mother's womb, demons were already on assignment. Witches, warlocks were on assignment looking, trying to see if they could attack the womb. Look at Revelation chapter 12. It says the woman who was pregnant, this dragon was chasing the woman down. He spewed water out of his mouth trying to drown the woman. He, was, he said his tail was swiping and trying to kill the woman. Trying to kill the seed of the woman. And the baby wasn't even born yet. The enemy was fighting you before you were even born. But why? Because they saw your destiny. They saw your greatness. And I don't have time to go into deep details, but a witch or warlock, a demon can look at your life. They can look at you. Every child of God has a star above them. And they can read that star and determine your greatness. So they were fighting you against your own calling before you knew how powerful you were. The enemy already knew you were called. The enemy already knew you were destined for greatness. So they started fighting you before you recognized your power. Before you recognized you had power. Before you recognized you had authority. So they read their star. How do you know? Remember when Jesus was born? It said the wise men came. Because they saw his star. Well. They saw his star. And so they got they went into astrology, etc. They read the stars, etc. And remember they, they, they stopped the Herod's house. Yeah. And they said, hey Herod, you know, we heard we saw the star, this this great king that's going to be born. Well, how did they know it was a great king about to be born? How did they know that? They read his star. Yes. So witches, warlocks, sorcerers, demons, read your star. And they say, You see how powerful they're gonna be. You see how great they're going to be. We have to stop them. Hold them down. Yeah, yeah. Tie them down. Mm. Before they can raise up. Mm. And that's why some of you have been struggling for so long. Because the enemy has been fighting against your destiny. Your entire life. But tonight you're going to learn how to fight back. Tonight you're going to learn how to fight back. It's not enough to just pray. You have to pray and war until you see the results. And I'm going to teach you some warfare tonight. I'm going to teach you some weapons that you have tonight to fight against the enemy. Now remember, we said there's three heavens, right? We talked about the third heaven. Who's in the third heaven? God. And when they, our loved ones who die in Christ, they're in heaven, right? Who's in the second heaven? That's where all the principality, the spiritual wickedness, all the warfare. So we see in Daniel 10, Daniel's prayer got held up for 21 days because that principality was trying to use legal rights against Daniel as to why Daniel couldn't get what God released. And what did Gabriel say when he got to Daniel? Daniel, from the first day you prayed, God heard you. And I come for your words. I come to bring the answers. I come to bring the blessings. I come to bring a breakthrough. But it was held up. I got held up by the demonic principality over Persia. And I was left alone. But Michael, the chief prince, came to help me. So Michael had to come help Gabriel fight so Gabriel could break free to get to Daniel. And guess what? As a child of God, you have an entire army mm -hmm. living over your house. Mm -hmm. Every child of God is assigned heavenly host to guard them. Mm -hmm. You're your own commander in chief. Mm -hmm. You're your own president. Mm -hmm. So you have an army over your house. Each of you has an army. 
but summon your army aboard because you're not putting them to work. You're not telling them what to do. You're not telling them where to go. So you have to open your mouth and say, I send the heavenly host to go before me and fight on my behalf. Fight against every demon, every witch, every warlock, every sorcerer that's trying to stop my progress, that's trying to stop my destiny. So you have to send them. They won't go unless you send them. So you have to use your heavenly host. Send them to fight. Every morning, every day, send the heavenly host to fight. That's a powerful weapon. They destroy. They wipe things out. Do you understand? It? They wipe things out. For you. On your behalf. And so now we see the second heaven. But now we're going to get to the first heaven. The earth. Now, we would think that God rules the earth. Scripture says the earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the earth, the world, they, they that dwell therein belongs to God. Yes, everything belongs to him. But let's go to Psalm 115 and 16. Psalm 115 and 16. So I, I, I love pulling this scripture out because uh, no one can say that I didn't tell you about your power. No one can say I didn't tell you about the jurisdiction God has given you. Psalm 115, verse 16. Look at what it says. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth, he's given the children of men. He's given to humanity. So who does the earth belong to? Us. The earth belongs to you. So don't get mad at God. Say, Lord, why hasn't this happened? Lord, why hasn't this happened? Why is this going on? Now, he wants to intervene. But he doesn't have jurisdiction here. Watch this now. Now, could he intervene? Yes. He's God. He owns it all. But he doesn't go against his own laws. He showed God that he won't go against his own laws and he said that spirit can't come on earth without a body. Yeah. So Jesus had to have a body prepared for him to come on earth. Now he was the word. The Messiah. But he would not go against the laws of God. For spirit to come there had to be a body. Yes. That's why demons need a body to dwell in. That's why they try to oppress they tried to possess because they need a body. Remember when Jesus Christ cast out the spirit of legion, of that, 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 that demoniac? Yeah. And when they said, please, don't cast us out of the region. Let us go into these uh, uh, pigs. They need a body. Because spirit can operate without a body. Now, Satan doesn't need a body because he already has one. Angels already have bodies. Michael has a body. It's a spiritual body, but it's a body. Gabriel has a body. We're spirit that came out of God, and we needed a body. So you notice that the real you is not what you see in the mirror. The real you is spirit. And we've been taught that we're half spirit, half human. No. You, are, you have a flesh, but you're 100% spirit. Jesus wasn't half human. Half spirit. He had a body, yes. But the only thing the body does is drive you around. You, your spirit, you, that's you. Your spirit is you. you repeat after me. I'm 100% spirit. I'm 100 spirit. So now your spirit tells the body what to do. But the problem is we've been allowing the body to tell the spirit what it is we're going to do. And when we're led by the flesh, that's trouble. That's problems. The enemy loves to prey on the flesh. Because he knows if you ever wake up to your power, to your authority, to your greatness, 
There's nothing they can do. So now you know the earth is the first heaven, and that's the realm you rule in. And, and some say, some folks said, well, the Lord's going to fight my battle. That was one scripture for one battle. That was one strategy for one battle. But people take that scripture and make it into doctrine. As though the Lord's going to fight every battle. No. Some battles God will fight for you. Most battles he will fight through you. I'm going to say it again. Some battles God will fight for you. Most battles he will fight through you. So now you understand that you are a weapon. Scripture says death and life is in the power of your tongue. So when you open your mouth because of the power of God in you, demons should flee. Now let me help you understand who you carry in case you forgot. Now some of you may feel like you're not good enough. You're not qualified enough. You know, you can never be in this position. Except I can never be in that position. That's for this person. I'm not qualified enough. I'm not educated enough. But let me help you understand something. You're actually overqualified to be on earth. Well, how, how so? Well, let's check the record. Now, in the beginning, remember I said that you're the breath of God, right? You came out of God. So... You're connected. You the, the DNA of God. Right? That's number one. So, you came out of God. Number two, once you accept Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ lives in you. Okay? So, number three, if you accept Jesus Christ, you get Holy Spirit. Because he's the promise. He's the helper. He teaches about Christ. So, now you are the DNA of God. Jesus Christ is in you. Holy Spirit is in you. But then Luke 17 and 21, remember, he said, The kingdom of God is in you. And what comes with the kingdom of God? His power, his presence, his glory. All of this, all of them in you, one by itself, is enough. But he gave you all this, all this. That makes you overqualified to be on earth. And because all of this is in you, that's why he said you are a king and a priest. You are a ruler on earth. And I say this all the time. The earth is not your home. It is your throne. I'm going to say it again. You got to catch this. Repeat after me. The earth is not my home. It is my throne. This is where you rule from. When you wake up out of your bed, your feet hit the floor. This is where you rule from. As you begin to walk with a sole of your feet tread, this is where you rule from. When you go to work and your feet hit the ground, this is where you rule from. This is where you rule from. Yes. And God expects you to rule. Amen. Why else would he call you a king? Yes. It's not a ceremonial position like in England, the Queen of England. It's not a ceremonial thing. Yes. It's a legitimate position. Yes. I don't care your background, your family history, where you live. You are a ruler. Amen. Repeat after me. I am a ruler. Say it again. I am a ruler. And God expects you to rule. Now let's go back to Matthew 10 again. Remember he said he gave you power. To heal the sick. To raise the dead. To cast out demons. Now let me ask you a question. Now this is a quiz. This is a quiz. Now in the word of God. Does God make suggestions or does he make commandments? Commandments? So if God makes commandments in his word, when he says preach the word, he will say, raise the dead, cast out demons. Was that a suggestion or a commandment? So he expects each 
and every one of you to preach the word, to heal the sick, to raise the dead, to cast out demons. Well, why? Because you're bringing the kingdom of God. God is not bringing the kingdom of God on earth. You are. Remember, Jesus said, occupy, do business until I return. Remember, he said, greater works you shall do. Because he's going back to the Father. So what Jesus started on earth over 2,000 years ago, he's finishing in you. What Jesus started on earth, he's finishing it through you. That's why you're going to do greater works. And so you know what that means? Because he's giving you his power, his authority. That gives you uh, the power of attorney. What is a power of attorney? That means that uh, you have the authority to act on the behalf of that person. For example, if I have the power authority for pastor, I can go to the bank and withdraw money on his behalf. I can sign documents on his behalf. If I have the power of attorney, that means I can operate on his behalf. I can sign my name as though I were him. Yeah. Even though I'm not him, I have the power of attorney to sign my name as though I was him. Mm. So God has given you the power of attorney to have his power, to have his authority on earth. So when you show up, God shows up. When you go to work and show up, God shows up. Because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. So when you go in, God give you the power of attorney to sign your name as though you were him. Because he's doing it for you. That's why he said you have jurisdiction here. And what did he tell Adam and Eve? Rule, subdue, have dominion on the earth. God's not bringing his kingdom on earth. Uh -uh. You are. Now, Jesus taught us the model prayer. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. On earth. As it is in heaven. You bring heaven on earth. You are already a piece of heaven. On earth. If you want to see heaven on earth, look in the mirror. You are a piece of heaven because you came out of God. A piece of the third heaven is on earth because you're here. And that's why Satan hates you so much. Because when he looks at you, he sees God. Remember when Satan was in heaven, he would stand over the heart of God. Scripture talks about the burning coals of fire. The burning coals of fire in, in Scripture is God's heart. It's burning coals of fire. The, uh, you remember scripture talk about Satan had an uh, Ezekiel 28, a uh, uh, barrel and onyx and jasper and all these jewels over Satan. Luke, his name, name was once Lucifer. He would stand over the heart of God and the worship would go out and God, the love in God's heart would sit, hit Lucifer's body, all the Jews, and it would light up heaven. That's why you see that there's a rainbow over God's throne. So when Satan looked in God's heart, we were there. You were there. He saw you in God's heart. And when Satan got cast down to the earth, he thought the earth was his jurisdiction. It was nothing but darkness. Then God sent you. He sent light. And Satan looked and he saw us. And he was shocked. What are you doing here? I saw you in God. Why are you here? Where did you come from? And remember, Lucifer was a guardian of the glory of God. A cherub angel guards the glory of God. That's why when Adam and Eve got kicked out of the garden of Eden, God put a cherub angel to guard it. They guard glorious things, the glory of God. God's glory was in the garden of Eden. Satan once was a guardian of God's glory, a cherub angel. That was like the second highest ranking angel, a cherub angel. Yeah. And the seraphim are all around God's throne crying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. 
And so, Satan got down here with the fallen angels thinking this was their domain. Then all of a sudden they saw you and you had flesh, flesh on your body. But he still recognized your spirit, you, the real you, because he knew that was a part of God. What does scripture say? He said, this is God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit talking, let us make man in our image. He wasn't talking about flesh, he was talking about spirit. We were created in the image of God. God is a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Your flesh can't worship God. It's spirit that worships God. So now we understand the jurisdiction we've been given. Satan got upset because he saw us. And he's reminded. It, Satan is tortured every day because we're here. Because he's reminded every day of what he lost. He was around God's glory every day. That's why he got prideful thinking, I got all God's glory. Maybe I can be God. Yeah. He was around it so much. He rebelled because of his own pride. He gave angels free will. Just like he gave us free will. We have free will. Yes. And so now, every day he sees you, he's reminded how you're already lost. Yeah. But he wants to make you think, that you're losing. Yeah. But every day you show up in faith, you're winning. Amen. Every time you, your feet hit the ground, you're winning because you're gaining more territory. It's your job to rule here. You bring God's kingdom. That's why he said the kingdom of God is in you. Now we bring it by going, by preaching the word, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out demons. And so now we're going to shift our focus. We see what the enemy's been trying to do. Now we understand we have weapons. You can use the fire of God. The fire of God burns everything in his path. Everything. So one of the weapons you can say, I send the fire of God to burn all evil. To burn every trap the enemy has set for me. Because the enemy set traps for you. So you send a fire of God to destroy it. Send a fire of God to destroy every witch that's trying to kill you. Because you do know that it's real, right? There's demons and witches on assignment, and their job is to kill you. Their job is to stop your destiny. But do you know in heaven, there's something called a book of destiny? Every one of you has a book of destiny. And it has everything written in it that you're supposed to accomplish. Everything in it that you're supposed to do. And nothing in your book of destiny is bad. Everything's good. Everything's good. The bad things come from the enemy. So Satan, everything God creates, Satan tries to duplicate. So Satan says, okay, you have a book of destiny. So how do we stop Things are manifesting in the book of destiny. So he creates a book of destruction. A book of evil. And they write things about you. Write things about your bloodline. Write things about your ancestors. And say, well, yeah, I know they're supposed to prosper. But see what this ancestor did? They didn't repent for these ancestors. So now legally, because what that ancestor did, now we have still legal access to this bloodline. So now we still have legal access to you. So they're using that access to attack, to steal, to fight, to harm, generational sickness, generational issues, the same cycle over and over and over again. And all of you can identify cycles in your family. Cycles. People who had diabetes and people who died in an early age or, or murder, all the death on the, on the family, certain people dying, the men dying young, etc. All these curses. The enemy kept using it. Over and over again. Alcohol. Drug abuse. Addictions. So some of what you're fighting, you're not just fighting the demons that were assigned to you. You're fighting demons that were assigned to your ancestors way back when. So that makes you a generational curse breaker. You are the one that God sent in your family. Let me tell you something about family. And then we're going to pray. Let me tell you something about family. 
Some of you may say, I didn't ask to be born into this family. Mm. Oh, I wish I wasn't born into this family. Yeah. But you came on earth because you asked God to come here. Remember, you and God talked. You wanted to come. Send me. Send me. Send me. Send me. And God sent you. But God looked at families. And he saw the cycles. He saw the destruction. He saw what the enemy's been doing. Remember, he, he, he gave us jurisdiction. So we have to do something about it. So he looked at your family. And he said, I'm going to send you into this family. As a curse breaker. Because there were some previous curse breakers. That didn't wake up to their power. They didn't wake up to their authority. And the enemy is fighting you to win this fight. Because they know you are the curse breaker. They know you're the curse breaker. That's why the warfare has been the way it's been. Because you are one of the curse breakers on your bloodline. Now he can send many curse breakers on my bloodline. Even if you adopted. He'll put you in that family as a curse breaker. But the problem is. The enemy knew you the curse breaker. So they started fighting you in your mother's womb. Because they didn't want you to see this day. You're not here by accident. You're here by divine appointment. Today is a divine appointment. God sent us all the way from another continent. To come here tonight to unlock what's been locked up. To unlock your destiny that the enemy put cages and chains around. To break the chains tonight. Some of you will not go back tonight with the demons that you came with. And see, the biggest lie of the enemy. Is to make people think that Well demons can't get a child of God yeah. You can be saved Five baptized Hi. Filled with the Holy Ghost yeah. But if demons have a legal right To your bloodline yeah. They have a legal right to you But tonight We're going to cleanse your bloodline tonight My God. Tonight I'm speaking to the curse breakers. Are there any curse breakers in the house tonight? I'm speaking to curse breakers tonight. Tonight you're being activated. The switch is being turned on. You're being woken up from your slumber. Every serpent that's wrapped itself upon you is going to break tonight. All garbage that's been on you is going to break tonight. It's already happening. 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 happening. Begin to open up your mouth and praise the Lord. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. It's happening right now. Now they're shifting into another realm. 